Many people get into beekeeping without considering the time commitment associated with keeping bees. Remember, it's beekeeping, not bee having. You can't just have the colonies. It takes work to ensure that they are healthy and productive. So what are some factors that affect the amount of time that you're going to spend keeping bees? Well, the obvious one is the size of the operation. There's quite a bit of difference in time requirements associated with keeping one colony opposed to keeping 2,000 or more colonies. Second, time commitment varies by season, as we'll see later. Also, you can overwork your colonies. You can spend so much time in your colonies that it's actually detrimental to the bees. And likewise, you can underwork your colonies because you put them out there and you think they can do everything on their own and you don't check them but every few months. There's also a lot of work associated with keeping bees beyond physically managing the colonies themselves. For example, there's apiary management. There's ensuring that your equipment is maintained. There's all the beekeeper meetings that you might want to go to. New beekeepers especially, when they work a single colony, it may take them an hour. But by the time you get accustomed to working colonies, it may only take you five to 10 minutes. So there's lots of things that collectively go into how much time you're going to end up spending working your colonies and managing bees. When I consider the time associated with keeping bees, I think very much about it from a seasonal perspective. For example, spring is when bees need the most attention. During that time of year, you're feeding if necessary, you're medicating if necessary, you're treating the diseases and pests, perhaps you're going into your colonies to control swarming, you're supering colonies. All of this takes a lot of time. So what you'll find is that you'll need to visit every colony in spring somewhere in the neighborhood of every seven to 10 days to ensure that those colonies are well maintained. By the time you get to summer, a lot of that maintenance has decreased and you'll find yourself needing to only visit those colonies every two to three weeks, depending on the need of those colonies. When fall comes around, your management even decreases further to where you might find yourself needing to visit colonies every four to six weeks. Winter is the least amount of management that you'll actually have to put into colonies. It's cold outside, so the colonies are clustering, so there's really not a lot of work to do. If you're in a warm climate, you might want to look at your colonies every six to eight weeks. If you're in a cold climate, you might not even go to your colonies for every three to four months. If you need to work your colonies during cold climates or cold times of the year, you want to make sure and work those colonies when it's above 60 degrees Fahrenheit or about 16 degrees Celsius. Now keep in mind as we progress from spring to summer to fall to winter, there might be intense times of management that don't really fit the flow. For example, I said in fall, you may only need to visit your colonies every four to six weeks. Well, that may be true if your colonies are doing well and on cruise control, but if they need feed, if they need disease and pest management, you're going to have to work them more. So there's really no one size fits all for the pattern of how you'll work colonies, but generally speaking, it's greatest in spring, least in winter, and somewhere in the middle for summer and fall. Now, if you're a hobby beekeeper in spring, that working colonies every seven to 10 days may only require you one to three hours. But if you're a commercial beekeeper, you may be working your colonies 50 plus hours per week as you try to maintain that. So keep in mind, all of the time commitment is scaled. You can put as much or as little as you want to in it, but the better you take care of your bees, the healthier they'll be and the more productive they'll be.